So now, Ian, you've been doing this list of top geopolitical risks for some time. How does 2017 compare to some of the other years you've looked at? It's the worst. <laughs> oh, I was it, afraid of that. It, it really is. No, I'm an upbeat person. Um, and uh, look, I'm just happy to be here at the end of the day, right? But if you want to talk about the geopolitical environment, we have to recognize that this is the most dangerous year in terms of volatility, in terms of things that go bump in the night, uh, in terms of ways that politics will upset economics and markets uh, that we've seen in decades. I mean, uh, we call it the geopolitical recession. You know, there are economic recessions on average every seven to eight years since World War II. So people that have been in the marketplace for a long time are used to the boom and bust cycle. Geopolitics has recessions too, but we haven't had one since 1945. I mean, Pax Americana has been the world order. That's now over, and, and that's causing an awful lot of instability uh, around the world. Right, now you've done this list of all the different types of risks from all around the globe, but of course the top of your list is unpredictable America. So talk to us about that. Yeah, independent America, the idea that the United States uh, no longer is prepared to play the role of either global policeman, uh, architect of global trade, or perhaps most importantly, cheerleader of global values. This is no more uh, exceptional, uh, indispensable uh, America. And, you know, the interesting thing is that geopolitically, that may not be so bad for the United States. When you think about the arms race in Asia or cross-border conflicts across the Middle East, terrorism, refugees, you know, that none of that is really a serious challenge in the United States in 2017. But America not doing that is going to be a very significant challenge for other countries and other regions in the world. Um, and certainly, if you think about Air American allies, they're very unnerved by a United States that says that they no longer want to take on the responsibilities of traditional alliance management or the provision of public goods, the support of multilateral institutions that the Americans had the largest role in creating in after World War II. That, that clearly is the backdrop for all the political risk we see in the world uh, over the course of this year. Right, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of change. There are a lot of things to be nervous about. But now the second thing on your list is China overreacts. What are you referring to there? Well, you know, this is um, a year where the Chinese, they have the strongest leader since Mao and Xi Jinping. They have a big five-party Congress, uh, five-year Congress coming up in, in the fall. And uh, that, that is, you know, the, the absolutely critical for Xi to consolidate power uh, and to put the people in place that are going to allow him to, you know, finish out um, his term in office. Um, if there's ever a time that he is going to be maximally sensitive about not wanting to look weak, it is this year. And yet, you know, Trump coming in as president has already made clear that he's not happy with the status play uh, with the Chinese, not on North Korea, not on Taiwan or the one China policy, not on trade, not on currency, not on North Korea. Um, and so on all of those issues, uh, the likelihood that the Chinese uh, are, are prepared to overreact to perceived slights or real slights and antagonism from the United States, actually fairly significant. This is, of course, the most important bilateral relationship in the world, that between the U.S. and China. Obama didn't have an easy time with China when he started as president, but after eight years, it turned out to be one of the relationships that he was better at managing than most, certainly than Russia, the Middle East, or Europe. Um, Trump is likely to manage the Chinese relationship very badly, and especially if people don't take Twitter out of his hands. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but now, I, I, I want to ask you, you know, what's your biggest concern about this year? But I'd also like to know whether you see uh, any good things happening in 2017. How could things go right and how could things go wrong in the worst way? Can you give us both sides of the coin? Sure. Let me start with right. Uh, first of all, uh, there is reason to believe that the U.S. market towards 20,000 is, is not just irrational exuberance. 
But with the Republicans controlling both House, Senate, and the presidency, you could see a fair amount of spending on infrastructure that's desperately needed, that was completely locked up and divided government before. You could see the corporate taxation rate go down. You could see regulations uh, becoming more uh, narrowed down. Um, you could, I mean, you could see privatizations as well. These are all things that are likely to be seen as pro-growth. Um, and so the United States could do well in 2017 as a consequence of that. There certainly are parts of the world that also look like pockets of comparative stability. Southeast Asia, I'd focus on India, Pakistan. And while everyone's focused on uh, an impeachment potential for the second time in Brazil, it's precisely that threat that's likely to make the president, the acting president, Michel Temer, and Congress actually get reforms done, most importantly on pension, which is vastly overdue. So there's some things that can go well. The thing that can go badly, I mean, I would tell you honestly, in the last 20 years, if you had asked me at any point, Ian, do you think that there's a remote possibility that major powers will end up at war with each other? I would have said no. I couldn't see it. I can't say that in 2017. I don't think it's likely, but it's possible. Oh. Certainly over North Korea, you, you have to recognize um, that uh, the trust between major governments has eroded dramatically and the guardrails that keep escalation from occurring aren't what they used to be. I, I think we have to look at it with, uh, with, our, uh, with our eyes open. It's going to be a nervous year. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. My pleasure.